everybody. Hi, it's Becky from PowerToolsWithThread.com. That's my blog. I have the cutest project I wanted to show you today. I have been making these Designs by Juju pennants and bunting. And this is an in the hoop project. This is just so much fun. This is one I made for my new 10 needle. When we move into the new room, I'm going to uh, hang this above it. So a Spanky will have a neat little name tag. But these things are amazing. There are a ton of different sizes and styles and embellishments. You can do letters on them like I did. Look at this, isn't this cute? This is just plain lettering that I put on using Embrilliance. And they have different styles. Like this one just has plain cross hatching. See the background, the cross hatching? There is stippling. You can get them plain. You can make home deck projects out of these. You can do happy birthday banners out of these. It's just the possibilities are endless. I just had some leftover grow grain ribbon. This purple ribbon from Spanky, I've had that I bet you 10 years if I've had it a day. I'm going to link to the files in the description box below. There are two sets of these things and the they each one has eight different shapes and so you want to take a look and see which one or get both you know some of them are duplicated but for the most part there are different shapes in each different set each of the eight shapes that comes there are nine different styles in a single shape and then they all have let me see i made notes here each shape and style comes with either like this one uses 5 8 inch ribbon because it has buttonholes up here that the ribbon goes through. Or they also come with eyelets. Every one of them does. Every single shape, every single style. And there are seven different sizes of each one of these. So you get a ton of options. Honestly, the hardest part of this is figuring out what you want to make. That's why I just kind of stuck to something simple, you know, to give it a try. And I really like it. A couple of things to take into consideration. They recommend that you use water soluble stabilizer. You know, this is a single hooping and you will complete the front and then remove the hoop and put the fabric on the back. And then it will do the all around satin stitching on the outside. If you don't have water soluble, you can use tear away stabilizer, but you will get what are known as pokies. And pokies are the little white fuzz that is the paper tear away after it's been ripped out of the hoop. And then you will probably have to take a Sharpie marker and color in those little, you know, you want to trim them down and then color them in with your Sharpie marker. And that's also something to take into consideration when you think about the colors that you want to do. Do you have a Sharpie marker that will take care of any, if your machine leaves a gap in the threads at all, and you can see the fabric through them? Like this right here, I'm gonna get up real close. Look at the bottom of the B. Do you see two little orange dots where the fabric is showing through? I'm gonna go back with a Sharpie and color those in and it will be gone forever. So, you know, those are things you wanna take into consideration and think about. When you wanna make any embellishments on the, the pennant pieces themselves, I just chose a font that I stitched out on here. You may want to also maybe put applique. You can put a little another one and put a little applique spider on the outside of this. You can make Merry Christmas and maybe put a Santa. So you would want to purchase those separately. This file only comes with just the pennants themselves. You can put embellishments or decorate them any way that you want. I hope that you do one of these. I think you'll really enjoy it. They're a lot of fun. And you know, we don't do the whole boo thing here. And so I'm gonna give this to a friend of mine who has a, a booth that does the market days in their little town. And that way she can sell it. So I get the enjoyment of making it and showing you guys how, and uh, she can sell it, so. All right, let's get to it and I'll show you how to make these.
once you download your file from Designs by Juju and open up the zip file, in here you will see all the different file types that the different machines can use, but you want to open up the instructions. Once you get the instructions open, it will show you it has eight shapes in nine different styles and it will list all of the different styles that you can make. There are seven different sizes that you can make and you can make them in the four by four hoop. However, I caution you that in set number two, the heart will not fit into the four by four hoop. So you need to take that into consideration if you only have a four by four hoop. But Designs by Juju is wonderful. They give you pictures of what your final project will look like. This is the raggy version that it mentions up here. In the top, it will say you have raggy with heavy bean stitch and crosshatch quilting or stipple quilting. It gives you all of these different options. And the raggy means that you could use burlap and that will give you a nice farmhouse chic finish or you can use satin finish like the one that I did. They give you a list of materials that you're going to need and then they do a wonderful job of giving you step-by-step -step instructions. And where it says step one, that equates to the first stitch in your embroidery file. So you have step-by-step -step instructions with pictures for to help you every step of the way. After you've read the instructions and you might wanna print them out, then you can go up to your particular file type that your machine uses. I use a brother machine, so it uses PES. And here are all the different style types that you saw in the instructions. And I want to make mine with the satin stitch outline and the cross hatching in the background. Now I can see these as icons and they look like little pictures on my desktop because I have a piece of software called Embrilliance Thumbnailer and that is a utility made by Embrilliance that allows me to see each different file. Now while these might look the same, if you read the title of it, here it'll tell you bottom pointed 3 inch, bottom pointed 4 inch, and so on. If it has the word I-E-Y-E -E in the title, then it is using the eyelet. All the other ones will use buttonholes. You can scroll down and look at all of the different styles that they have and pick the one that's going to work best for you for the project that you have in mind. I've opened in Brilliance and I have set it up with a 5 by 7 hoop by going Edit, Preferences, and choosing the 130 by 180 millimeter. Here you can choose your hoops based on the type of machine that you have. You can tell the hoop size right here at the bottom. It'll give it to you. So I'm going to tell it okay. I'm going to go to my little folder here at the bottom. I'm going to grab this one. This is the one that I use, the bottom pointed four inch. I'm just going to grab a hold of it and drag it into Embrilliance. In Embrilliance, it has an objects panel over here on the right and here is my pennant that I just pulled in and there's a plus sign. If I click the plus sign, you can see all of the elements that make up the pennant. Here is the placement stitch for your batting, tack down stitch for your batting, and if you notice over here on the design, you can see it will highlight that particular stitch so you can see what it is that you're clicking on. Here is the tack down stitch for the fabric. There is the cross hatching. There's the tack down stitch for the back fabric. There's the satin stitch all around. There's the decorative stitch inside of the satin stitching. And there's the buttonholes. I want to customize this with a letter. So up here in the top menu, there's a bunch of icons and you can click the A and that will give you the ability to add lettering to your project. It comes up with ABC and over here on the right, down in properties, where it says text, I'm just gonna highlight this ABC right here and I'm gonna put a B. For the boo. 
I'm going to hit enter and it has changed ABC to just a B, but that's too small. If you come up to the left, here's the ability to change the size of your object. I made sure that mine is clicked on inch. There's a couple of radio buttons. You can either click millimeter or inches. And here is the height. You want to make sure that your lock is locked. You can unlock it or lock it by clicking on it. And I'm going to highlight this and I'm going to type in 2.25 for two and a quarter inches and hit enter. And that changes the size of the object that I have selected. I want to bring it down just a little bit and so that I don't get it off center, I'm just going to hit the down arrow key two times on my keyboard. Now, I want this B to stitch out after the cross hatching so that when I tack down the backing fabric, all of that stitching will be hidden. What you need to do to rearrange it is to highlight it, put your cursor on the picture next to the object, and grab a hold of it and drag it up and hover it over the element that you want it to be after. So I hovered it over the cross hatching and then let go and that put the B below the cross hatching and then the next stitch will be the tack down for the backing fabric. That's exactly what I want. I'm going to move it just a little bit over, make it look a little more centered. That's it. I like that. Okay, now all you have to do is go File, up in the top, Save Stitch File As, and when your menu comes up, you can find your USB and save it there. To make this project, you're going to need to have a water-soluble stabilizer in your hoop. You're going to need a piece of batting. You're going to need a piece of fabric for the front a piece of fabric for the back. You're going to need some tape. I use 3M tape. This works really well. It's a paper, like a first aid tape, but it works great. And you're going to need a firm surface so that you can pull your hoop out and trim around your banner part. You're going to need some curved embroidery scissors. I recommend Ginger. Don't go cheap. You don't want to hurt your fingers. And you're going to need some ribbon to run through or cord or something like that to run through your banner parts when they're all done. So let's get started. At the Luminaire, we're going to touch the screen and go to embroidery. And we're going to touch the pocket for memory and go to the universal symbol for USB. There it is. And I'm going to hit set. And we are all ready to go. Very simple. I'm going to hit embroidery. And you can tell right here it's going to do the placement line for the batting. You're going to stitch directly onto the water soluble stabilizer. I'm using an Organ 7511 EBBR embroidery needle. Let me thread my needle. And I'm using Isacord embroidery thread. I have a 90 weight pre-filled bobbin in the bobbin case. I'm going to put my batting down. You want to make sure your batting covers everything by at least half an inch. This is a great use of scraps. This is the batting tack down stitch. You want to remove your hoop and trim away the batting from the outside. I don't recommend uh, doing the trim after you put the fabric on. You really should trim the batting first and then the fabric second. Otherwise it it gets real fuzzy looking around the outside. I tried it and it I did not I wasn't very happy with the results. You know me, I'm always 
I'm always trying to cut corners and save some time. Okay. When you put your hoop back in your machine, make sure to put your hand on the bar to make sure if that's the kind you have. Some of them have clips. You don't want the bar accidentally sliding back and forth at all. And the next stitch is going to tack down the fabric. So I'm going to just lay this on top. And again, another great use of scraps. The next stitch is the all over cross hatching. I'm going to do a thread color change for that. When I do my thread color changes, I just put both threads together, kind of twist them a couple of times to get them to think that they're one, and then do a single loop with a knot, and that's it. And then I pull the thread from in front of the needle. I'm gonna thread my needle. And it's time for the cross hatching. I should have trimmed away my outer fabric before the cross hatching, but that's okay. It's not that big of a deal. I'm gonna do it right now. You wanna trim pretty close. Uh, you want to make sure you've got it close enough so that the final satin stitch will cover the edge of the fabric. The next step is to remove the hoop and you want to tape your backing fabric across the bunting piece. So you just take your backing fabric and put it over it, making sure it covers on all sides. And then take some tape, top and bottom. That's gonna make a nice backing so you don't see all of that. If you are concerned about the back of your project being seen then you may want to change your bobbin thread to match your top thread for uh, the satin stitch that goes all the way around. The next stitch is the tack down of the backing fabric. Now you want to remove your hoop and trim away the outer fabric from the tack down stitch. Once you have the outer backing fabric removed, put the hoop back into the machine, and it's time for the all-around satin stitching. It's going to do an underlay straight stitch. It's going to do two rounds of an underlay zigzag stitch. Here's the first one right here, and then it will do the all-around satin stitching. And it says it's going to take four minutes, so I'll see you back here in a little bit. The next stitch is a decorative inner stitching that goes right next to the satin stitch. It's like a triple bean stitch. And the final stitch is the buttonholes. All finished. That looks really good. I've got a couple of little threads here I need to trim. No big deal. I'm going to remove it from the hoop and trim around it pretty close. Not right up next to the stitches, but you know, pretty, pretty close, like 16th of an inch. Be real careful not to get your satin stitches and you uh, can get rid of the valine or the water soluble with either a wet q-tip or a wet towel if you want or you can soak it in the sink 
It's up to you. You just, you know, lay them out on a towel to dry. Now, to trim these open, when you have garment sewing, the trick is to take a pin and put it at the top of your buttonhole, just like that, in one side and out the other. You want to make sure that it's right there, not up at the top, but right where the top stitching starts, right there. Then you put your seam ripper and poke it through at the bottom, and then you push up, straight up, like this, and the pin will keep you from going too far. That's how, if you, or if you have one of those buttonhole, it looks like a little chisel, those are great to be able to just, you know, a buttonhole cutter. If you're, if you're into garment sewing, you might have one of those handy dandy things. Otherwise, you can certainly cut it with scissors. So that's it guys. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. I had a lot of fun making these and I think I might have to be making some more coming up for Christmas or maybe Thanksgiving. We'll talk to you soon. Boo.